as a coach, you cannot ask for any more than I've been given here. The decade of decline is over. The Seahawks are in postseason play. First time in 17 years, we've won 10 games. That's the first yeah. time. The Seahawks win the NFC West. Congratulations. You're division champs right yeah. now. Seattle, you've waited three decades. The time is here. We're all going to the Super Bowl. From Detroit, Michigan, where the Seahawks are set to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers in Super Bowl 40 for all of the marbles. Pat's going to throw. Looks to the end zone. Now he scrambles. Has some running room. Now he fires to the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks! Well, I see a flag. Did a flag come out back there? Or no? flag did. Came out. I think the Steelers are saying it goes against the Seahawks. Offensive pass interference against Daryl Jackson. Ooh, that was a ticky-tacky call. Roethlisberger <laughs> on a quarterback shot. Tries to dive in. He's close. He's going to be caught short of the play. No, it's a touchdown. And a reviewable play if Mike Holmgren's coaches upstairs tell him that they want this to be challenged. You take a look. Does the ball get to the the, 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 the goal line? They're always going to have blockers on him, not letting him out the free end. Seattle pressing the pace, and the pass is caught over the middle, and that's Jeremy Stevens. But there's a flag down. Holding. Holding. Number 75 offense. And yard penalty. Repeat first down. Holding. Personal foul. Block below the waist. Number eight. Are this? Every time they've made a play, it's been called back. And they pitch it to the left, and now here's the handoff on the reverse to Antoine Randall Land. He's going to throw it down the field. There's a man open. Touchdown, Pittsburgh! Hines Ward! The Steelers score from 43 up on a gadget play that they worked on in practice on Friday. The game is over. The Pittsburgh Steelers did it the hard way. They fought tooth and nail to this Steeler team all the way to the bitter end. And even though they come out on the short end of this thing, this team is going to be around for a while, and they will have to be answered to next season. The Seahawks are going to go to 1-5 and five on this season, and I don't think anybody in the Western Hemisphere would have believed that was the case. We hear we talk about next week's opponent. Obviously, that's not going to happen. So let's talk about the uh, the off season and the next year ahead of you, Coach. Um, ideally, what would you like to do in the next year? Well, I'm going to do things that are different. I'm going to be real open to opportunities if something presents itself. It might be in football, Paul. It might not be. I don't know. I, I have to learn that about myself. But I still feel good, and uh, uh, it's been a great ten years. And now, this is the next chapter. That's where we're how we're looking at it. We've always said after the game, Mike Holmgren has the final word. I'll give you that final word as we wrap it up. Well, I want to thank everybody, first of all. You know, the fans have been wonderful to me. And the beauty of how I'm doing this, the way I look at it, is I can remain in the city that we love. We've grown to love it. This is our home. And sometimes when you get let go under tough circumstances for a coach, you can't do that. So maybe the best thing that ever came out of this thing is that I can still stay here and call Seattle my home. Yeah, well, it's been a fabulous 10 years, Coach. We appreciate everything you've done for pro football in this city, and uh, we're looking forward to your return wherever it may be. As long as you get back in the NFL, it's going to be worth it. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate right. it. Thank you all for coming today. I just want to tell you how excited, how honored, and how incredibly humbled I am to be the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. I want to thank Mr. Paul Allen, Todd Lewicki, and Tim Ruskell for having the confidence and faith in me to give me this job. I want to say something about the man that I'm following. Mike Holmgren, as we all know, is a great coach. He's a legendary coach. And the past years have been an incredible opportunity for me, personally, to learn from one of the all-time greats. Had I not been here the, the past two years, I wouldn't have that knowledge of our players. And that's very important as we move forward because I don't think it's important or necessary to come in and, and wipe the slate clean. You know, come in and say, this guy can't play, that guy can't play, instant evaluation. And so working with Mike Holmgren, coupled with 
my experience in the league, the other people I've been around, and my three years as a head coach will only make me a better head coach going forward, and I'm very excited about that opportunity. Behind the center, Chris Myers, one back, it's Chris Brown. Three wide receivers set, chopped to throw on first down, throws a bomb right sideline. Andre Johnson at the 30, the 20, the 10, 5, rock and roll, touchdown, Texans, 64 yards, opening play of the game. Motion to the left side by Finley. Hand off to Grant, left side of the line, breaks through to the 50, Kenny Wright, 45 Touchdown. Yards. He's going all the way. It's set from Terry at the Belmont. No one will catch him. Touchdown, Green Bay. Hasselbeck takes, five-step drop. He's in trouble, and the ball comes out as he got sacked, and the Cardinals have it. From the Seattle 31, here's the snap to Hasselbeck. Four-man rush. Hasselbeck wings it over the middle. Intercepted by Bimby this time. I don't question our competitiveness. I don't question our competitiveness. I don't question our fight. I don't question any of those things. I think that they, they're desperate to win. I think right now it's an element of, of uh, inconsistency. You know, you see it over and over again. First down at the Texans 31. Backs in an eye. Hasselbeck, play action again. Has time, throws left side. This one's picked. Pollard to his right. 40, 45, 50. The 40, the 30. One man to beat. 20, 10. He's going to score. Touchdown, Pollard. Off the pick. 70 yards. Green Bay, 36-yard line out of the eye. Here's the fake toss. Hasselbeck rolling right. Pressed by Jones. Dumps it off right side. Throw it away. He threw it away to A.J. Hawk, who makes the interception down the left sidelines. 45-50, 45-40, into Seattle territory to the 30-yard line. Not acceptable. Not acceptable. Absolutely not acceptable. We're not going to fight our ass off and have a field goal kicker go out there and miss two field goals and lose a game. Not going to happen. The Texans end their four-game losing streak with a statement. They demolish Seattle 34 to 7. Congratulations to the Green Bay Packers with a 48 to 10 victory over the Seattle Seahawks. Today's final score, the Cardinals 27, the Seahawks 3. Everybody that puts foot sits on that plane and comes on these trips besides our corporate sponsors have to has to accept accountability. And uh, the only way we're going to get better is if we do that. And it starts with self-examination. It always does. We have to shut it out and just uh, continue to practice hard, do the right things the right way for the right reasons, like I've said, and we'll get consistent. We will, we, will, we will become consistent as we keep the same people doing the same things over and over. I'm Paul Burmeister, and we are following breaking news out of Seattle. Seahawks president and general manager Tim Ruskell announced his resignation this morning at the team's headquarters in Renton, Washington. Ruskell was in the final year of a five-year deal. The Seahawks have struggled recently, going 4-12 and last year, and they're just 4-7 and through 11 games this year. Ruskell knows it's all about wins and losses. It will come together. It didn't happen quickly enough, and I understand that in terms of the fans and ownership. It didn't happen quickly enough, but it wasn't because we didn't do it right. We're building it brick by brick, and that will continue. Often when, you're, when you are rebuilding a pro franchise, the last thing to come is the wins. If you're going to do it right, if you're not going to cut corners, and I believe that's going to be the case here. We are breaking in now to programming here on NFL Network. Multiple sources are reporting that Jim Mora has now been fired as head coach of the Seattle Seahawks after only one season at the helm in Seattle. He spent the previous two years being groomed for the head job by Mike Holmgren as the assistant head coach. When Holmgren stepped down at the end of 2008, Mora was announced as head coach on January 13th of last year. And nearly a full year later, January 8th being today, Mora is now out. Michael, what happened here? Well, you know, Fran, when you go 5-11 and 11, and then the second half of the season, Jim Marr was 2-6, and six, and the last month of the season after Tim Ruskell, the general manager, got fired, the season just completely fell apart. And there was really no sense of hope, I think, for the Seattle front office. And I think that caused them to look in another direction. They're clearly trying to go in a different direction. Maybe they did not think Jim Mora was the guy to take them in that direction with him and members of his staff, or maybe they're close to hiring a general manager who wants to bring in 
a different set of people. I mean, I just think maybe there's going to be new leadership there and, and there are going to be wholesale changes. And they might have a candidate, you know, in mind that they've targeted, be a Leslie Frazier or somebody else uh, who they think can move things forward. Is Pete Carroll going to be the new head coach of the Seattle Seahawks? Uh, I think there's a real good chance. My cell phone's been ringing off the wall, Fran, and I can promise you this. There's a lot of people telling me Pete Carroll is actually going to do this. He's going to move forward and make the jump. And I think when you have the situations and the, the, the way he wants it laid out and all the things he needs to be successful, Seattle is a very attractive place. With breaking news, Randy Moss here on the NFL Network set, along with Michael Lombardi. Another one of these poorly kept secrets in the NFL. Joint press releases, the University of Southern California and the Seattle Seahawks. It's official Pete Carroll has resigned his position as USC coach and has agreed to terms on a contract to become the next head coach at Seattle. We now have a great head coach, and soon we're going to announce the hiring of a great general manager. Today there's new hope for the Seahawks and an opportunity again to dream about championships. I am very, very proud to introduce Pete Carroll as the Seahawks executive vice president and new head coach. I am so uh, fired up to, to be here today my appreciation for the uh, for this opportunity, uh, for from the or top of the organization, from Paul Allen to Todd Lawicki, and uh, everybody that I've I've had a chance in the short time uh, to deal with, have set this thing in motion in a manner that um, that really is is almost dreamlike for me. I come from a place where we had tremendous fortune, and I was blessed to be at, at the University of Southern California for the years I was there. I loved my time in college football, but always I had. A, a, you know, a thought that maybe it could come together in a manner that would fit right, that would give me the chance to do things the way I would like to do it, and, and this is, it's, it's come together. What we're, we're going to go about doing here is, is in, in everybody that we deal with in the, in the organization, we want to see how good somebody can be, whether they're, they're, they're working downstairs or whether they're working upstairs or whether they're, they're catching passes on, on the football field. We want to figure out a vision for every aspect of everybody that contributes to our, our effort, figure out how good can they possibly be. And then once we figure out what that maximum, maximum is, then we're going to work to, to make that vision come true for that individual. That's how this thing works. That's how my thinking works. And so as we take over, if you look at it in the broader sense, how good could we be here at Seattle? That, that's, that's what we have to figure out. How good can we believe that we can be? What is the vision for this? And, and in that, then we work to it in every way that we can. We're going to do things better than it's ever been done before in everything we're doing. That's the line that we live with. That is the principle. And I'm a competitor. And I'm going to, competition is going to be the central team in this program. And on and on and on. The Pete Carroll era in Seattle is underway. And if Tuesday's press conference was any indication, it's going to be very similar in tone to the Pete Carroll era at USC. I'm so uh, fired up. To, to be here today. He used the same phrases they've heard for the last nine years in Los Angeles. We're going to do things better than it's ever been done before in everything we're doing. Dropped in the same buzzwords about competition and energy and talked about how jacked Seahawks fans were going to be about the coaching staff he was going to put together. Clearly, Pete Carroll doesn't intend to change for the NFL, but he says he has changed a lot since the last time he was in it. As for why he's returning to the league now and here? They've embraced my approach and the way I see things and the way I want to do stuff in a manner that they want to you know, wipe the, the path clear and give me the, the clearest opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to bring everything that I have to offer. That, that's really what I was looking for. It was the trust and the belief from the, from the top of the organization. They don't have an agenda of how they want their football played. They want me to do that. A handful of players showed up for the press conference to hear what their new coach had to say. And all of the players I talked to said they liked what they heard. Lawyer Malloy, who played for Carroll in New England, said as long as he established that he was boss, he'd be fine. Lofa Tatupu, who played for Carroll at USC, said he's been telling guys, if you want to win, fall in line. Pete, big name, been courted by the NFL many times before, and he said this was just the dream opportunity to get back into the NFL. But do you think it's a good hire for the Seahawks? You know, it could be a good hire if they hire the right personnel man. Um, I, I don't think it's a good hire if you give Pete, Car Pete Carroll total control of the football operations. I, I think you need to get a uh, – the job is too big for, for one man. I think you need to get a good – 
personnel guy in there, and if he makes the football decision that Pete Carroll coaches the football team, then it can be a good hire. But again, I want to tell Pete, uh, Seattle Seahawks does, is not an organization that recruits itself like USC used to. Every, you know, everyone talks about the dominance that he had at USC, Pete, and and all of that aspect. The NFL aspect to this, coming back to the NFL, what do you think will be different for Pete Carroll this time around? Well, I mean, it, it, it's it's a situation where you're going in and rebuilding a team. Um, you know, that's going to be tough to do. He can't be. Uh, the Pete Carroll acting like a 17-year-old kid around those guys. If you just use his body of work in the NFL, because that's what we're saying is going to get him over the hump, I don't know if 33 and 31 is a, and one playoff victory is enough for me to give him this kind of control. Not to mention, if we just go by his, his resume in college, then he and Nick Saban, you got the same kind of coach, and do you trust the guy then? He's got ties in the NFL. I, I think Pete Carroll intellectually is going to be fine, and I think his swagger <laughs> and his confidence is going to be even better. I, I wouldn't laugh, why, 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 why wouldn't players like him? I mean, I, I mean, you guys say you're not sure if the rah-rah will work. But play, he's a likable guy. Why, why won't players believe little, in, in what he's selling? A little birdie gave me a tip in the meeting. That that old that that a little birdie <laughs> gave me a tip in the meeting that one of his players just said he was a joke. So if, when you get it from the locker room, it tends to go a long but, way with players like us. You know, I, that, I was think, a, that was a situation we was following Bill Parcells. It was a little different. Time, yeah, you <laughs> Regardless, and I watched Pete throughout his time at USC. When the, when times get tough, the players want a guy that steps into the locker room and lets them know what is wrong yeah. and how we're going to fix how it. We fix at it. times, Pete is that happy-go-lucky guy. Oh, that yeah. guy, that great guy, that guy that players always love playing. He's a player's coach. You're not going to make it in the league if when it's time to not be the player's coach, but to be his coach and you don't do it. You're going to lose That's respect. You lose. Well, the proof obviously is going to be, and once they start playing football games under Pete Carroll, whether uh, it works, but uh, that bird? he gets, he gets bird? the five-year deal with $35 million. This process began eight weeks ago. We felt the new era of the Hawks was uh, forthcoming. We audited this organization. We looked at both our football team, football operations, um, and at the end of the day, we eventually moved forth towards candidates and uh, eventually focused on 20 names. 20 became 10, 10 became four, and today, four becomes one. With the announcement of John Schneider as our new general manager. John has a very unique skill set. Uh, you'll see him scouting college games, but he also has expertise in sc uh, scouting professional rosters and just an incredibly well a uh, skilled guy with an amazing skill set. As we take over the, you know, the control of this organization and to set it in, in motion uh, to create championship ways, um, I, I couldn't fi find a guy that I felt better about and more pumped up about than John. So with great respect and, and, uh, and, and great hopes about doing terrific things, I welcome John and, and can't be more fired up about the fact that you're here with us and uh, away we go. Congratulations. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out. Uh, I want to thank, first off, I want to thank uh, Mr. Allen and Todd for this uh, uh, great opportunity and what we're going to be all about as, as, a, as, a, as an organization moving forward, you know, improvement every day, competition in all areas of, of, of what we do, striving to be the best and striving to, uh, striving to, to, to set a standard in, in the league. And, uh, you know, throughout this interview process, I'm sure that, that – these two gentlemen to my right have, have seen different ways of doing everything, you know, doing things in the in the scouting world, and and um, we're not we're not out to reinvent the wheel, but we're going to try to improve it every every single day, and um, it's something that I'm extremely passionate about, and I think it's something that 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 really you know fed the energy between uh, uh, Pete and myself. Back at SC, I didn't say well, it was going to take us you know, 10 years to get it going. You know, it took us uh, it took us one season to get rolling, and we were, we stunk the first year. I don't want that to happen this time around. You know, I want to get it rolling right from the beginning, and, and we have to play good football, and we've got to put good players in good positions and, and grow and learn about our guys and, and make the improvements that we need to make as soon as possible. We're we are not two guys that are going to be sitting back on our heels. Now we're going for it, and that's what I love so much about John. We we're going right from day one to start figuring out and putting it together, and and we're calling on our players to respond in that fashion as well. We're not waiting around. We don't have to. So uh, uh, we're going after it. And I'll just add, these guys obviously talked about 6 and 14, and that represents an enormous opportunity for us here. But they spent more time talking about the later rounds and where players are, and, and that part was really exciting.
with the sixth pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Russell Okung, offensive tackle, Oklahoma State. The first Oklahoma State offensive lineman drafted in the first round since 1970. And he's Pete Carroll's first pick. It's really just uh, been very nerve-wracking. Uh, you kind of don't know, you know where you're going to go. Uh, I know where your future lies, but uh, uh, I got my name called for the, you know, in, with the sixth pick. Uh, I'm fired up. I'm, I'm excited, and I'm blessed to be here. And uh, uh, now I'm in. I'm ready to go. With the 14th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Earl Thomas, defensive back, Texas. He's only five foot ten. Two oh eight at the combine. Two oh two with his pro day. I think that's a better weight for him. Three year player. He redshirted as a freshman. He had eight interceptions. He's the most instinctive safety I've seen on tape. He's a playmaker on defense. I fully expect he'll step in day one begin to make plays. Why? His quickness, his change of direction skills. People say, how consistent a tackler is he? I'll give up, a, and by the way, he's a tough kid, but I'll give up a little bit in the run game in the NFL of today to get an instinctive playmaker on the back end. Eight interceptions this year, his sophomore year, and the people that worry about his durability, 24 starts, 24 finishes. We had made a declaration. We thought we saw something really unique in Earl and, and, all, and all that playmaking ability that he, you know, I think he had something like 24 pass breakups and eight picks or whatever the heck it was for the year and uh, the extraordinary numbers and, and something that we needed desperately to add to our to our team. Uh, like you said, it's truly a blessing to be here. Uh, you know, I give all the credit to God. You know, without him, uh, blessing my talents, I know I wouldn't be able to be here. You know, I'm young, like I said, and I just want to learn from the older guys that's already here and uh, see, see why they lasted this long, you know, just take their direction and go from there. With the 60th pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Golden Tate, wide receiver, Notre Dame. When I watch tape of him, I think Heinz Ward coming out of Georgia. When he catches the football, he's a playmaker. He's got really strong hands. He competes for the football. I can't, Coach, when I watch tape of this guy, Coach, I can't tell you, and I can pick his game apart a little bit because that's my job, but once he gets the ball in his hands, he's explosive. With the 133rd pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, Seattle has selected Cam Chancellor, defensive back, Virginia Tech. That's a pretty solid choika right there, Brian Billick. You could make the argument that the Seahawks, pretty much across the board, they're the consensus number one, at least on paper, up yeah. from this past weekend. Yeah, man, gummy. He had a ball, he had a ball. He had to get loose. Let's go kick it up. Yeah, kick it. Oh, look how sweet we look today. Big fellas are looking sweet today. Golly. We're looking to see who can win on the deep balls. This is a competition right here. Oh, that's a sweet little grab right there. The most important question heading into camp. This one definitely deserves a drum roll. It's how will the team react to Pete Carroll's style of coaching? Um, you know, he's, he's the third coach they've had in as many seasons, and he has stressed competition from the day he walked through the door. We've seen that at all the practices, and it's going to be a, a key to how the season goes, to how well the team reacts to his style of coaching. I can see why his freaking golden was so good against him. He's just as natural as oh, going to be. Somehow he comes down with the ball all the time. I don't know. He just, <laughs> he has, like, his concentration, he, ha he just has it that other people don't have. He comes down with it. Big hop, big hop. Play the hop. Oh, you got it. There you go. Now you're down the middle. Golden. That's a great look for you right there. Nice job. Nice job. Yeah, I know you'd been all physical and tough and just knocked the out of him too, wouldn't you? Yeah, let's say yes, okay? Yeah. Tell me, in your mind, as you watch him, the biggest difference uh, in the way things are run this year. Well, good choice of words in runs practice, because he runs all over the place. And that's, <laughs> I mean, you'll see, you'll hear that, you'll see that. Um, one of the drills that stands out to me is they do a bag drill early in practice where the players are running through bags. They're not just running through it, the coaches are running with him. They're throwing balls, they're yelling at him, they're screaming at him, trying to get him pumped up. And that gets back to that, that competition thing that uh, it's just a very high tempo uh, style of practice and what it does is it lets them actually practice less but get more accomplished. Earl! 
Always play with whip. You know, get outside and play everything, leave everything inside you there. You know, when you rock and roll, keep it on there. Then you can always close back down, but the ball bounces and we don't get it. That should be a play you can make, okay? Come on, Russell. Come on, Russell. Come on, Russell. Let's go, big Russ. Let's go, everybody. Get back, get back. Come on, get, come on, get those hands out of your pants here. I have to bring you out here with boxing gloves on. Chris, Chris, what's his first name? Chris? Oh, that's right. That's right, that's right. Nickel Tampa, Nickel Tampa. Nice job, huh? Are you scared when I show that? <laughs> nice work right there. There's going to be times all season long where game's going to be so darn close. It's going to be right down to the end of it. It was 15 to 10 at one time in this practice. Defense ready to win the match, and it's over. Steps up in the pocket, but he's going to go down again. Three wide receivers. Rivers drop back. He's in trouble. He goes down. And the Seahawks continue to put pressure on Philip Rivers. That's exactly what Coach Carroll said he needed out of his defense. That's exactly what you're talking about. Between the safety Thomas and Kelly Jennings, a cornerback. Yeah, that was horrible. What you you You're skying this week. What are you supposed to do? I was going for that run. Remember that shot got to be stopping that no, hard. No, it's only on smash. The only time you got to think if we have a smash call. Other than that, never. You, that would have been your pick right there. It's got a first down for the Chargers out near the 30 yard line. Rivers going to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Fires. Ball is tipped up. It's intercepted. With the ball is Thomas. He's across the 30, 25. He might go. 15 knocked out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Hey, Kaden kicking it off to Leon Washington, the return man for Seattle. And Washington's got a lane. Leon Washington turning on the speed. Washington. He's gone. Touchdown, Seahawks. 101 yards. <laughs> Holy smoke, the longest in team history, 101 yards. And this is what we've been waiting for out of Leon Washington. There was a huge crease over on the right side, and he hit it. And once he got to the kicker, Kading, it was just one little move, and the rest is history. The Hawks lead 17 0. They've got a lot of uphill climb to go now, the Chargers do. So hopefully the Seahawks can continue to ride this momentum. Seahawks with the rush. Ball thrown to the goal line. Oh, my goodness. Touchdown, San Diego to Gates. For heaven's sakes, somebody's got to stop Antonio Gates. Yeah. Relax, guys. Relax. we got to get this crowd rolling right now. Kicking left to right. They just beat him. Got a return ball here. Look at this. Look at this. Hayden gets this one deep. Washington at the one. Grabs a five. 10, 15. Steps over a man. 20, 25. Breaks through. 30. He could go. 35. Midfield 40. He will go. 30, 20, 10, 5. Oh my God. He's done it again. 99 yards for a touchdown. 
Two kick returns for a touchdown in the same game. Leo Washington for president. One more chance for the Chargers and one more stop by the Seahawks defense. Dig down deep just one more time and you secure this win. Shotgun formation. Rivers steps. Rivers has time. Fires to the goal line. It is intercepted. Just for a second, just for a second, don't it feel great? Don't it just feel great? Don't it just feel great? Dang, that feels so good. So hard fought, had to hang forever, had to keep making things happen. It was coming from where you didn't know. And, and, and all of a sudden, man, some just starting to happen. How about, how about our guys today, man? How about Leon? Hey, baby! So get away, get away, get away, get away. Get away. It feels so good, it feels so good, it feels so good. Hawks on three, one, two, three! Hawks! We made a little uh, deal today with Buffalo uh, to get Marshawn Lynch to come. With the 12th pick in the 2007 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Marshawn Lynch, University of California, running back. Marshawn Lynch grew up here in a North Oakland neighborhood called Goldenville. His mother, Delisa, worked two jobs to put food on the table and clothes on her children's backs. Her primary job was keeping Marshawn and his three siblings off the streets. The neighborhood wasn't the only thing in Marshawn's life that was tough on him. He rarely saw his father. My mama would play, play both parts. Moms would be like, oh, I'm finna take you over here to, uh, to your dad's house. Then when I get there, my dad like, oh, okay, I'll be right back. And then you don't see this guy for like <laughs> two days or something. And then after a while, you just you build up numb feelings to that. So you start to expect like the worst out of people. He was a high school legend in Oakland, California. Oh my goodness, please. He is touchdown. He was a local legend and a super prep All-American. It was here that he earned the nickname he carried for life. Beast mode. He continued that at Cal, where Marshawn was fed a healthy dose of Skittles and the ball. He gives it to Lynch. Lynch breaks to the outside. He's got it. Just 15 minutes from his home and the mother who kept him off the tough streets of his hometown. He gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. After his junior season at Cal, Lynch declared for the NFL draft. What awaited him was life on his own, 3,000 miles away from everything he knew. I didn't know what to expect. I just knew I was going to New York. So I thought it was finna be on and pop. I thought I was finna be out there with, <laughs> with Jay-Z. <laughs> and then when I finally landed in Buffalo, oh man. In his first two years in Buffalo, Lynch rushed for consecutive thousand yard seasons and was selected to the Pro Bowl. Lynch the carry again, finds the seam again, inside the 10, inside the 5, touchdown Marshawn Lynch! But there would also be consecutive seasons of trouble. At 3.30 a.m. on May 31st, 2008, Lynch struck a female pedestrian with his Porsche SUV. He left the scene. Less than a year later, on February 11th, 2009, police in Culver City, California near Los Angeles arrested Lynch for carrying a loaded concealed firearm. The NFL suspended him for the first three games of the 2009 season. I would like to see them grow up in project housing authorities, being racially profiled growing up, sometimes not even having nothing to eat, sometimes having to wear the same damn clothes to school for, the, for a whole week. And then all of a sudden, a big ass change in their life. Like, they dream come true to the point where 
starting their career at 20 years old when they still don't know shit. I would like to see some of the mistakes that they would make. Those mistakes ultimately cost Lynch in Buffalo. As the 2010 season was beginning, his life and career were at a crossroads. You know, if, if you guys have followed it along, we've been interested in Marshawn for a long time and uh, finally came together and uh, John got it worked out with their people and, and uh, we're pleased to bring him. It's, it's uh, a guy that, that I've known for a long time, so we're gonna move forward. It's, it's this week, it's good that we're on a break. Uh, it isn't gonna disrupt the game week uh, preparation and we'll get him in here as soon as possible and we'll get to work. Exciting player, you know, he's been a, you know, like a brother to me for a while now. Uh, just exciting to watch. I mean, he's gonna bring a lot to this team. I'm just here to come and, uh, you know, come, come and help the team, you know, uh, accomplish some of the goals that they have which I know is some of mine, and that's winning. Uh, you know, I haven't been fortunate in the past, you know, to do that. So here's another opportunity for me to go out and accomplish something I haven't accomplished on this level yet. Marshawn Lynch is in. Marshawn Lynch gets his first touchdown as a member of the Seahawks, fighting into the end zone. That's all Marshawn Lynch. Wow, what a run. You're just going to see him come off the edge here. Look at this, one shot, two shots, the third shot. That's just Marshall, that, that's just a great run. You know, we were been, we stressed, uh, you know, all week that, you know, if we do what we had to do, you know, we would, we would come out victorious, and that's pretty much what we did. Thought you were, thought you was Charlie, man. could have said worse. I did, I was like, what Charlie doing with this mic in my face, man? Charlie! Is this your pops right here, man? <laughs> We got Charlie Pops over here. I say, what Charlie doing with this mic in my face, man? So now third and goal. It's Lynch, and he's into the end zone. Lynch again. He is in this time for his second touchdown of the half. Where to go, Marshawn? Where to go? Doesn't matter how you run it early, it's how you run it at the end. Right here, we're up town. Let's run it. Let's pound it. Lynch, up the middle, inside the 10, he makes a move, and Lynch is into the end zone for the third time today. Well, yards after contact for me, watching you get hit and bounce off hits and continue to, you know, you've got a real driving force out there. You don't get, it's, it's hard to take you down, man. <laughs> it's hard to take you down. Yeah, well, man, I, you know, I, I thrive off that, man. Uh, you know, where I grew up was a, was a tough place, so, you know, uh, they told me, uh, you know, back when I was young, that uh, uh, tough people last, uh, tough times don't. So, you know, I kind of took that and ran with it, and, and, and it stuck with me. And, uh, you know, I just carried over and onto the field. The center is eligible. The handoff to Lynch, and he's in. Touchdown. Twelve-play drive. Seven runs, five passes. 80 yards, and the Seahawks take the lead. This is the beginning of a new week for the Seattle Seahawks as they prepare for the final regular season game against the St. Louis Rams. The beginning of a new week and the beginning of a great opportunity. With a victory, they win the NFC West. Regardless of our record, uh, you know, going into this game, the, the outcome would pretty much be the same as a chance for us to go to the playoffs. And, uh, you know, when you go to the playoffs, your records start over at 0-0. Uh, so one of us got to go home. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's not too much of the records. It's, uh, you know, who coming to play on Sunday. This matchup between the 6-9 and nine Seahawks and 7-8 and eight Rams may not excite the rest of the country, but it certainly does have the players on both of these teams excited about the opportunity. That's the opinion throughout the Seahawks locker room. There's no point in worrying or being concerned about what's happened up until this point. The only thing that's important is the game on Sunday at 5.30 against the Rams. Well, there's a lot of energy uh, around the building today. You can see it uh, in the looks of the players and in the coaches, this opportunity that comes up after all that's gone on in this season uh, and positions us in it with the chance to play for our division makes for a lot of excitement. If we want an easy game, this isn't it. Nah. This is not going to be easy. No, don't expect it to be easy. So when things get rough, we say, so what? It's a four-quarter game. Yes, sir. That's all I know. Uh, 
One of the reasons that everybody likes this game, why we like it as coaches and why our players like it, is for these kinds of challenges and these kinds of opportunities. Hey, just take the time right now to feel this. You only get this only a few, a few, a few times in life. Feel this right here. Love this. Yes, sir. This is where we step up. Players step up in this moment. So yes. shine today. Marshawn Lynch introducing himself. He's been the regular starter, but Forsett is in there for the first two plays tonight. And Whitehurst slings it downfield and getting open was Ruvell Martin. Inside the 30, inside the 20, and tackled at the 13-yard line. Second and goal. Whitehurst is four for four. Rolling. Comes back the other way. Touchdown, Mike Williams. You see it so often, roll this way and throw it back across the grain as the defenders all move to their left. And for Mike Williams, what a long, strange ride it has been for him. Out of football for two years and comes back. And boy, what a first drive for the Seahawks. Second and 10 now, back at his own 37. Bradford again, shotgun, trip set to his right. Jackson in the backfield, play fake to him. Bradford stands strong. He's in trouble. He's wrapped up. He's going to go down. Back at the 30-yard line. He is sandwiched back there. Both of the two directing traffic on defense. Graham's going from left to right. Low snap. Bradford gets it. Joe. Ball is picked up. Seahawks intercept. It's Will Herring. At the Seattle 36-yard line, Herring steps right in front of the Bradford pass and snuffs out that drive. The Seahawks offense gets the ball back. Third and 14 for the Rams. Bradford out of the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. And he goes down again to Bradford. Back at the 30-yard line, the ball comes out. The Seahawks are NFC West champs. Congratulations, 12th man. You deserve a playoff game, and you are going to get it next Saturday. What a way to wrap up this season. Could we get our ass back together? But you, but I'm telling you, the strength of you guys staying with us, not not letting anything get in the way of it. You just kept staying with us and staying with us and staying with us, even though there was always reason to challenge it and question, but you never did. You hung in there together. That is what made us tonight. Look at that football game. How about your defense tonight? Yeah! <laughs> Seahawks are set to take on the New Orleans Saints in the first matchup. I'm sure uh, this is the first time that you've heard this, but the Seahawks are the first team at 7-9 to win their division. Uh, defend your position why you deserve to be in the playoffs. We're not apologizing for anything. We, we battled like crazy to get this, as did the other teams in our division, as did the teams in other divisions. And, and uh, um, so we're, we, we, we're the last guy standing here, and so we're proud of that. We're going to go represent and hopefully do something really special with our opportunities and see how far we can go. I mean, there's, there's no, there's no uh, governors on us what we can do from this point forward. There's no restrictions on how far we can go. The record has nothing to do with it right now. It's how we play on Sunday. Right now, the NFL has a rule. If you win your division, no matter what your record, you do get to host a playoff game. Thinking about what's going on in Seattle, should there be a change to that? In this case, I think we all agree Seattle's probably the worst team in the playoff. If anybody's at home waiting to see who do we have to play in the first <laughs> round, they're looking and saying, ah, if we have to go on the road, I'll take Seattle. Let's move on to the next game in the wild card weekend. What game? <laughs> Is it a game? game? <laughs> Is well, you a got, game in you got the New Orleans Saints traveling to Seattle. Does anybody give the Seahawks a shot? Yeah. Yeah, I give them a shot. They'll, they'll show up and they'll play. 
Japan, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you this. Pete Carroll is going to have them fired up. Yep. They're going to run multiple pressure zone packages, yep. one gap, two gap. <laughs> yep. They are going to be schemed up, and the New Orleans Saints and Drew Brees is going to slice and dice them like a shrimp coming out of the Gulf, okay? You know, Seattle, 7-9. and nine. They've lost all nine games by 15 or more points this year. <laughs> they've gotten blown out every time they've lost. You're playing against a team that can score with anybody in this league. I, I think the first thing that New Orleans needs to do is just match the energy the first 15 minutes because it's going to be electric there, and, and you can't get caught up in the emotions because they might play better than their record for the first 15 minutes. And then I believe... Everything comes back to the table, and you start playing just like the first true drive. football. Just like the first drive against the Rams. I was like, whoa, this team's ready. That first drive went, and they scored the touchdown, yeah. and that was it. And this has been talked about, and should we recede, and should they have to be bowl eligible and don't have a 7-9 and nine team? It's all by the wayside. They're in the playoffs. doesn't matter. They don't care if they're 7-9, and 9-7 nine, nine and seven now. It makes no difference. I've had Seattle several times. I've had New Orleans. I love that Seattle's in. I know the people of Seattle are loving it. There is no way the Seattle Seahawks are going to beat the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They're both 0-0, zero and zero, though. Yeah, on, yeah okay. only on paper. You're right. No, you know, it's hard to, to argue against that. I mean, this is a team that, you, you're right, they did get in at 7-9, and nine, but they did get in. They had to fight their way in. And the only thing I think that's going to that give them a chance on Saturday is the fact that they're playing at home. They're playing at Quest. They're playing in front of the 12th man. It's uh, going to be cold. They're playing a dome team. How am I doing so far? Yeah, well, you're, you're finding a lot. I'm checking them off right uh, here. How am I doing? No, no, no. From Quest Field in Seattle, it's wild card Saturday, the first game. The New Orleans Saints against the Seattle Seahawks. It's gone empty. We're not even supposed to be here today. It's a foregone conclusion, the outcome of the game. I didn't get that memo, did you? Hell no. no. Did you get that? Nope. All right, then let's make sure. We're going to go out here with an expectation to win. That's how we're going to play the game. It's like nobody expected us to be here. But us, the people in them stands. That's all we play. That's all we're playing for. That's all that matters. Ain't nobody in America giving us a chance outside of Seattle, baby. I ain't never lived by nobody else. You can feel it. You can feel it. The Saints came to the wrong field today. The Seattle Seahawks have lost. They have lost often. In compiling a playoff worst 7-9 and nine record, they have lost seven of their last ten games. Saints are set now. Y'all know what we got to do. An absolutely jammed to the rafters. Quest Field all set for the Seahawks to host. The defending world champs, the New Orleans Saints. Here's a third and one now for the Seahawks. And Matt's going to throw, rolls right, throws. Bounces off the hands, it's intercepted. It's intercepted far side by Greer. Hey, watch out for them going up top. Hey, they're going to try to silence the crowd. Here's play action. Bree's going to throw, and he's got Colston inside the 30. Stays on his feet. A 30-yard game. Play action. Bree's dumps it underneath. Heath Evans, touchdown. The former Seahawk. The last thing that Seahawk fans wanted to see their Chargers do, play from behind early, and they're going to be behind 10-0. Nobody said it was going to be easy, right? Nope. Nope. Hell no. Hey, we stick together for four quarters, no matter what. First down, Seahawks at the St. 11. Play action fake. Here's Hasselback. Wide open. Touchdown to Carlson. The Seahawks are on the board. That's how you answer with a touchdown drive. Brand new ball game. Brand new ball game. Spot the ball at the seven. Hasselbeck 
Wide open for the touchdown, Carlson. The second time today that Hasselback has hit Carlson for a touchdown. Watch him fall down. Roman Harper gives up on it. Carlson stands up. That's like the backyard, Tom. Let's go, baby! Julius Jones in the backfield, and he gets it. Coming left. Back to the middle of the field. Ball on the ground! Ball, 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 ball. We got that! I know for a fact we got that one. We got it! The Seahawks have it! We got it! We got it! Oh, man, are they fired up now? Hasselbach's going for the touchdown. He has Stokely. He's got it for the score. Touchdown, Seahawks. The 45-yard touchdown reception, Brandon Stokely. Holy smoke. What a great play. What a great pass by Hasselbach. The Seahawks take the lead. Time to go. Let's go. Super Bowl like this. I know they didn't think they were going to be the same way like it was in New Orleans. And the Seahawks giving the Saints all they can handle at the moment. Let's go, ho. Put us up one more. We're going to off on nine. Both it empties the backfield. Here's Hasselback. The man under center. Takes the snap. Drops back five. He's going to let it fly downfield. Mike Williams is deep down there. He's got it. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Mike Williams. Got it. Got it. Got it. What a 38-yard beautiful rainbow pass. The big underdog Seahawks have a 31-20 lead on the Super Bowl champs. A lot of plays left, right? Let's make sure everybody's on it. We're doing our right. Seahawks make a last late second change defensively. Saints will run it with Julius Jones. Second effort, he's in. The Saints got the Seahawks a bit in a change. And the Saints draw within four points. The Saints continue to close the gap. Seahawks 34, the Saints 30. Now it's up to us to be mentally tough to win this game, okay? Matthew under center, Obamanu goes in motion right to left. Brown silent now, as opposed to when the Saints have the ball. Oh, look at this one.
it happens is everybody gets all in, everything you can do, to do everything we can do, every single step of the way, and then we get it done again. And we'll just keep on. Nobody thinks this is going to happen, except for the guys in this room, and that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. These guys hung extraordinarily well and, uh, and stayed together and kept, kept believing, and that was what was most powerful. That's who we've become. So hopefully the program will continue to grow in that direction, and, and uh, as we go through our opportunities, we'll make this team stronger and better, and we'll be uh, further ahead because of what we've gone through. That's the greatest run I ever seen. And that's a bold statement. That's like, that was, that's the greatest run. I put that number one against any run.